Okay, we're going to talk about linear relations. So, we need to define a relation. I've never been totally satisfied with this because it uses the word relationship. Come on, relation, relationship, it seems like it's the same thing. So, the best I can come up with is it's like a connection. It's a relationship or there's a, there's a connection. And specifically in math, it's a connection between X values and Y values. We've been talking about ordered pairs, right? Last day you were graphing things on, on a Cartesian plane. Look like this, right? And we, we graph different points on here. Those are ordered pairs when you graph them. And a set, a bunch of ordered pairs together makes up a relation. So in this way, it's a relationship between X values and Y values. So there's five different ways to represent these relations. One way is with an equation. So I'm just going to make up a little equation here and we'll use it as my, our example for all of these. Um, I don't know. I'm going to say example is Y equals 3X minus 2. Okay? So this is an equation. You could plug stuff into the X value. You could plug stuff into the Y value. And there's a relation between the X and the Y. What is the relation? Well, another way we could do is we could talk about it in words. What's happening here? What's happening to every X value? So I'm going to use the same relation, this Y equals 3X minus 2. What's happening to the X's is you're multiplying them by 3 and then subtracting 2. So in words, how you could say this, I'm going to put it in quotations to show we're talking. You could say 2 less then three times a number. Okay, so this is a relation. This is the exact same relation. It's just shown in a different way. There's another way we could show the same relation here. It's all the same. Ordered pairs. Hey, that's what we did last time, right? When you have an x coordinate and a y coordinate, that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to come up with some ordered pairs that go along with this. So let's start. I'll just get ready for it. Okay, well, we just said here we want to do 2 less than 3 times a number. Or we could look back up here. If I put a number into x, what number? We can put any number. I don't know. Let's put 4 in there. So if I put 4 in as my x, what we want is 2 less than 3 times that number. So if we put 4 in here, you get 3 times 4, which is 12. And then take away 2, you get 10. y equals 10. So one ordered pair would be 4, 10. Let's do another one. How about if we put 3 into the x? If you put 3 into the x, you get 3 times 3, which is 9. Take away 2 is 7. Let's do one more. Let's put 0. I don't know. Put 0 into the x. 3 times 0 is 0. And 0 take away 2 is negative 2. And we could do this all, all day, right? How many numbers could I plug into that x? Infinite. There's. I just put 3 down. There's an infinite number I could put in there. All right, a fourth way to uh, represent a relation, a table. Hence the reason I have this table sitting right up there. Now, we could use some of the same things. You see how it says 4, 10? Guess how I'd put that in here. 4 is the x value. It's the first value. It's a 4. And 10 is the y value. There you go. I could put all these in there. 3, 7, 0, negative 2. Uh-oh, I've got one more here. Oh, well, just do the same sort of thing. C come up with any x value you want. I don't know. How about negative 2? Now let's figure out what the y value is. 3 times negative 2. What's that? 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then take away another 2. You're down at negative 8 now. Okay? That's another way. And again, this table could be infinite rows long, and we could fill it up with, uh, with values. And the last way to represent a relation, I wonder what it is. Ah, oh, if only I could guess. Any ideas, everyone? Yes, it's a graph. You could graph these things. How would you graph? Well, look, we already have ordered pairs right here. Let's just graph those exact pairs. So one of the uh, ordered pairs is 4, 10. So remember, we're going to crawl before we climb. We're going to go over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 10, way up here. That's 4, 10. Next one, 3, 7. Over 3, 1, 2, 3, and up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Next one, 0, negative 2. 0 means don't move at all, and then go down 2, negative 2. And we kind of have another one, don't we? We have this negative 2, negative 8. We could also be graphed. Negative 2, negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There you go. 
What do you notice about those points? What you should notice is they all line up. This, my friends, is why it's called a linear relation because you're always going to get lines if you do it correctly. So what you do is you actually draw a line connecting them. Now, how far does that line go? It goes forever. So you can actually draw, and you should draw, little arrows on the end of this to show that this line goes forever. Now, here's an important idea. On this line, there's a bunch of points. How many? Infinite. There's an infinite number of points. Point, 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 point. Hey, that point we actually talked about, that was negative 2, negative 8. Point, 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 point. There's another point we actually talked about, 0, negative 2. Point, 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 Goes on and on, points, 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 points. Points up forever there, points down forever there. And for every single point on that line, it satisfies this equation right there. If you take the x value and the y value of any one of those points, even the decimal ones, the negative ones, the big ones, the small ones, you plug the x value in there, the y value in there, it will always work. Okay? You're always going to have this line when you graph today's relations. Not every relation is a line, but every linear relation is a line, and that's what we're talking about today. Okay, determine if the ordered pair, so we have two ordered pairs down here, we want to do no. do each one of those ordered pairs satisfy this equation right here? Okay, what's the idea here? The idea is, and you better keep this in mind when you have an ordered pair, that an ordered pair is made up of an x and a y. So guess what you're going to do with the x and the y? You're going to put them into x and y and see if it really does equal 6. So let's try. We're going to write down 2, and then I'm going to substitute in x. Remember my hint, whenever you substitute, put in brackets. Minus... 3, substitute in the 2, so put it in brackets, and then equal 6. Well, actually, we don't know if it equals 6, so I'm going to put this question mark on top. Does it equal 6? We're going to find out. So, what does 2, 6 mean with nothing in between? It means multiply. 2 times 6 is 12. Minus, same thing here, 3 times 2 is 6. Does that equal 6? It absolutely does. Yes, this pair here, ordered pair, it works. It satisfies the equation. Let's see if the second one does. You can bet it doesn't. Every math teacher on the planet is going to have one that works, one that doesn't work. But let's try. This is your x, this is your y. So we put x, the 5, into the x. 2, substitute in the 5, minus, now be careful, take away, then comes 3, then comes the y value, which is negative 2, so we put that in brackets, equals 6. Or does it equal 6? We'll soon find out, everyone. So 2, 5 means 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, there's two ways you can do this. You can do take away, and 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and get 10 minus negative 6, which you could then change by adding the opposite to 10 plus positive 6. That's one way you can do it. Or, the other way you can do this, and this is definitely my preference, is you go 2 times 5 is 10, then you go negative 3, take that sign with it, negative 3 times negative 2 equals positive 6. Either way, you get the same answer, but there's just kind of saves you a step if you think of it that way. And again, we're trying to find out, does this equal? Does 10 plus 6 equal 16? No, 10 plus 6 equals 16. So this point does not satisfy the equation. All right, how about this one? It says, for the ordered pair x comma negative 5, what x value satisfies this equation? So we have another equation, and we're trying to figure out what number would need to go in that x spot in order to satisfy this. Well, we don't know the x, but what we do know is the y value, which is right here. So we could at least plug that into the y. y is negative 5. Where I see y, I'll put negative 5 equals negative 2x plus 3. And what I want to do is I want to figure out what x equals. I want to isolate x. I want to solve this equation, right? This is what we've been doing in this chapter. Got to get the x by itself. So there's a couple numbers that are problems. This number is a problem, and this number is a problem. We try to add or subtract first. So which one would we, would we subtract? The 3. It's plus 3, so we subtract 3. What you do to one side, you do to the other. Negative 5, take away 3. You can add the opposite if you want, plus negative. Anyway, you should get negative 8 here. And it's equal to negative 2x. We don't want negative 2x, we just want x. We've got to get rid of this negative 2. This is not take away 2. This is negative 2 times x. So you do the opposite. You divide. 
Divide by exactly the same thing so you can cancel it out. If you just divide by 2, it doesn't work. Divide the other side by the same thing. Whoops, sorry, negative 2. So on this side, the negative 2's cancel and you've got x. Over here, you've got a negative divided by a negative, so it's positive. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and you're done. If we made the point 4, negative 5, then it would satisfy the equation. You can try it out if you want. All right, moving on. This time we're going to look at tables and graphs. Remember, those are two other ways. We've got our equation. We could talk about in words. 4 times a number. Take away 2 times another number equals 12. So we could do it in words. We could do it in uh, ordered pairs. And uh, we're going to kind of do that once we fill in our table. All right, so you're going to find some points that work. So, um, basically some ordered pairs. Using zeros is often a good idea. Because when you multiply things by zero, they just kind of cancel out, right? If I was going to plug, so it's kind of like what we just did, I'm going to plug zero into this x here. So I'll write it down here. I get four times zero, and then minus two y. I don't know what y is, so I just have to write it equals 12. Okay, look what happens here. Four times zero is zero. This is gone. So all I have to do is solve this. Negative two times y equals 12. Well, to solve that, I divide by negative 2 to get rid of the negative 2. What you do to one side, you do to the other. So you end up with y equals 12 divided by negative 2 is negative 6. So this is negative 6. Okay, for this one, you're going to use 0 again, but you're going to put into y this time. So you don't know the x, but you do know that y is 0. So minus 2 times 0 equals 12. Look what happens when you go 2 times 0. You get nothing. You get 0. So this is gone. Only need to solve this. Divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 3. So this one is 3. 3, 0. One more point here. We're going to put 4 into the x, and we don't know what y is. So where am I supposed to do this? I'll do it up here. We're putting 4 into the x. So 4 times another 4 minus 2y equals 12. Can't cancel anything out, I'm afraid. You have to actually do this. 4 times 4 is 16 minus 2y equals 12. All right, it's going to take a couple steps. We've got to get rid of the 16. How are we going to do that? Subtract on both sides. Now be careful. What's left over here is negative 2y, and 12 take away 16 is negative 4. Okay, then we need to divide both sides by negative 2 to get rid of the negative 2 on this side. So we get y equals negative divided by negative is a positive. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we have y equals 2 in this one. Now, we've essentially got some ordered pairs here, don't we? We have an x value and a y value. The ordered pair is 0, negative 6. It's kind of a waste of time writing this, but I'll just make it totally clear here. We have an x value of 3 and a y value of 0. That's 3, 0. And x value of 4, y value of 2. That's 4, 2. Let's graph these things. So 0, negative 6. Don't move it all and go down to negative 6. 3, 0. Go over to 3. Don't go up or down. 4, 2. Go over to 4. Go up 2. There you go. Did we do it right? Sure seems like it because they line up in a straight line. If you got that, chances are you did it right. This is, by the way, why we do 3 points instead of 2. If you just did 2 points, that's all you need to draw a line. But if you want to kind of check your work, make sure you did it right, find 3 points, and if they line up, you can bet you did it right. But if you get three points and one's there, one's there, and one's over here, something's wrong. But then if you're like, wait a minute, this is actually a mistake. When I corrected myself, I got it up here. Oh, now you know we got it right. But to be really strict about it, you only actually need two points. Okay, the next one is harder. How come? Because it doesn't give you either of the values. But do you remember what uh, I just said, or you can look up in the table above? Which values are often kind of useful? Try one value that has an x of 0. Try another value that has a y of 0. It's often going to be very good. So let's do this faster this time. If I put 0 into the x, remember what happens? 3 times 0 is 0. This is just gone. Look what's left. y equals 9. Boom. Already got my y value. Okay. Now, if I put 0 into the y, what happens there? Well, that's gone. So you're left with 3x equals 9. 3 times something equals 9. I bet you can figure that out. Or if you can't, you could divide both sides by 3. That gets rid of this. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So your x value is 3. Let's graph those first. 0, 9. That means don't move at all. Go up to 9. 
three, zero. That means go over three, don't go up anywhere. Okay, like I'm pretty confident this is right, right? Draw my straight line right through there. But looks like they want three points. Um, let's see if we can get another one. Now, it is kind of nice because there's no number in front of the Y, so it actually makes it kind of easy. You could pretty well put anything into the X. Sometimes it's not so easy. What do you think? What do you want to do? Uh, what's that? I heard someone say they want to put five into this one here. Okay, whoever that was, I'll put five in there. So let's see. We can't. This is hard to do in our head. So let's actually do this. We have three, and then we're putting five into x plus y equals nine. Well, three times five is fifteen plus y equals nine. Only thing I have to do to get the answer is subtract fifteen from both sides, and I've isolated that y. 9 take away 15 is negative 6. So this is that point. Hopefully it's going to line up. We have 5, negative 6 is right here. Do those three dots line up? I certainly think they do. So let's draw our line. Okay, last question. Find the value of k so that the graph goes through the point negative 2, negative 4. I mean, all this work today, so much of it is just remembering. In an ordered pair, the first one's x, and the second one's y, so we can plug this into any x we see and this into any y we see. And that's what we're going to do. We put 5, then I see x, which is negative 2, plus k, I don't know what k is, that's what I'm trying to figure out, and then y is negative 4, which I'll put in brackets, equals negative 2. 5 times negative 2, well that equals negative 10, plus k times negative 4, what's going on here? Well, usually we don't write the letter first, we put the number first. So rather than putting k times negative 4, think of it as negative 4 times k, which is negative 4k. So what we have right now is negative 10 plus negative. How you might want to switch that, whenever you get plus negative and you're doing equations, instead of going plus negative, just put minus. It's exactly the same thing. So in fact, what I probably would have done is this. Negative, or sorry, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Don't put anything down. Now, I'm doing a positive k times a negative 4. Well, a positive times a negative is negative. And k times 4, or better, 4 times k, is 4k. And that's equal to negative 2. So now we need to get this k by itself. Look for a number you can add or subtract. That would be the negative 10. We'll add 10 to both sides. What's left over here is negative, don't miss that. I know it's a takeaway, but we're turning it magically into a negative 4k. Negative 2 plus 10, you have more positives. How many more? 8. Last step, divide both by exactly what you have in front of the k so you can cancel out. Divide by negative 4 and divide by negative 4, which means your answer is k equals 8 divided by negative 4, negative 2. All right, everyone. There you go. That's relations. Kind of a strange thing, but an important thing. Uh, take care and talk to you next time. One more video in this chapter.